Hey, how's it going on guys? So in this video, we'll discuss about this problem, counting bits. Given a non-negative integer number num, for every numbers i in the range 0 to num, calculate the number of ones in their binary representation and return them as an array. So let us consider some examples first. So for this example, 5, the output is something like 0, 1, 1, 2, 1, 2. So I represented numbers from 0 to 5 over here in their binary format. So it can be clearly seen that Number of ones in zero is zero, so we have zero over here. Number of ones in one is one, so we have one over here. Similarly, number of ones in two is also one, so we have one over here. For three, the number of ones are two, so we have two over here, and so on. Now let us see how we can solve this problem. So this is a number n. This is a general number n. Okay. And for this general number n, this is the least significant one. What is the meaning of least significant one? It means that this is the rightmost one. So in case there exist bits on the right hand side of it, those all will be zero. So this is the general number n given to us. Now if you see, this is the general number n minus one. Now if you see carefully, what happens is, on the left of the least significant one, that is this part, this part remains same for n minus one. The least significant one will be converted to zero. And in case there exist bits on the right hand side of the least significant one, which will be all zeros for n, will be converted to all ones. Now you might think that why this holds. So this is a very general thing. This will hold for any two consecutive numbers. So you can take any two consecutive numbers like 15, 16 or 100, 101 or any two numbers. It This thing will hold. So I can show you this thing with the help of an example. So this is the number 52 and this is the number 51. So if you see carefully, this is the least significant one for 52. That is the rightmost one. So what I just said is the left hand part of the least significant one will remain same. That is this 110 will remain same for 51 as well. The least significant one will be converted to zero. And on the right hand side, all zeros will be converted to all ones. Okay. Now, if I take the bitwise end of these two numbers, n and n minus one. So what will happen is, see, on the left hand side of the least significant one, this part is same for n and n minus one. So this part will remain same for this n and n minus one as well. This is one over here and this is zero over here. So this will be zero. And on the right hand side, there will be all zeros over here. There will be all ones over here. So it, this will be all zeros, correct? So this is n and n minus one. Now, if you see carefully, let us compare these two numbers, this number n and this number n and n minus one. So if you see carefully, these two numbers will only differ in this bit. This is one over here and this is zero over here. Everything else will be same. So actually this is a common technique to remove the rightmost bit or the least significant bit or the least significant one. So using this, what you just did is for from the end, you have removed the least significant one. So this is the common technique that we use. So what I can say is this number and this number differ only at one place. That is this place. Correct. So we have removed the least significant one. So what can I say? Can I say that the number of ones for this number will be equal to the number of ones for this number plus one? Let me repeat it again. What I just said is this number and this number, these two numbers only differ at one bit. That is the least significant one, which is removed from one. We have moved to zero. So what I just said is the number of ones for this number will be equal to the number of ones in this number plus one. So this is what we are going to do in the problem. So for any number n, we will try to find it for this number and we'll just add one to the result and then we will find the number of ones for this n. So I've written the algorithm over here. You can pause the video, you can read it out and I'll write the code now and then things will be more clear. So first what we'll do is we'll create a resulting array of size num plus one. Why num plus one? Because we want the number of ones in all numbers from zero to num. Now, so result of zero will be actually zero. Why is that? What I'm saying is the number of ones in zero is zero. This is already discussed. The number of ones in zeros is actually zero. And actually we don't have even have to write this thing. Why? Because it will be initialized to zero only. So I can just remove this thing and I'll iterate from i equals one to i less than num plus one i plus plus. 
now what i did do is result of i will be same as result of i and i minus 1 plus 1 so this is what we discussed over here the number of ones for this number will be same as number of ones for this number plus 1 so this is what we are doing over here and after this is done you can simply return the result so i guess that's it let me submit the solution so it got accepted so i guess that's it from the video in case you have learned anything from the video you can hit that like button and in order to support my work you may consider subscribing to my channel thank you all.